When you are pursuing a business opportunity of any kind, whether it's software, SaaS, e-commerce, whatever it may be, the total addressable market is one of the biggest decisions that you're gonna make, the market that you go after. Given a world of any business where market, product, and go-to-market are the three pillars, market determines whether you're gonna fail or succeed more than anything else. If there is a great market, then you are more likely to succeed. If the market is tough, whether you have the greatest team or the greatest part won't matter as much because the market demand just won't be there. This is why founders, whether you're bootstrapped or venture backed and investors obsess over the total addressable market. That's one of the biggest things people obsess over because that determines whether this is gonna be a worthy venture or not. Here's the big question though. How do you think about total addressable market? How do you conceptualize it? How do you calculate it? How do you pick it? And and how do you communicate it to yourself, to your team and investors? In this episode, I'm gonna walk you through the three principles that you absolutely need to know about total addressable market. And when you follow these principles, not only will you be able to pick the right market, you'll be able to communicate it to your investors, to yourself, to your team, and make sure that you're set up for success. Intro. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unstoppable. I'm TK, and on this channel, I help SaaS founders like you grow your SaaS business faster with an unstoppable strategy. Now, if you are new to this channel, welcome. I drop an episode every single Sunday with actionable strategies and tactics from the trenches, from actually building SaaS companies every single Sunday so that you can accelerate your path to the next stage of growth. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon. That way you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode with the TK energy. Now, if you're already part of this community, if you're part of my coaching programs for scaling SaaS companies, my people, welcome back. It's really awesome to see you over here. So I remember I was pitching investors. I was pitching Andreessen Horowitz. I was in their big conference room with all the partners, the general partners and actual partners. They actually led our series B round at my last company, ToutApp. And one of the partners asked, like, he didn't really ask, he just kind of come like, man, I really wish that we had this, ToutApp, we, we pioneered the sales engagement space. Like, I really wish we had this when I had a 200% sales team, like to be able to like scale our sales team. At the same time, another partner asked, hey, like, could this go after marketing automation as well, instead, instead of just sales teams? And we had a really great discussion talking about exactly where this could go. This is the big question inside the minds of every single major investor and also every second time founder. First time founders, Baby TK, didn't obsess as much about market. We got lucky enough to pick a market that was massive enough and had the right macro trends. But second time founders realize when you have a great total addressable market, your product, your go-to-market becomes a lot easier. When the market dynamics aren't quite there, you can't communicate it, you can't calculate, you can't show the opportunity, it's a lot harder to recruit team members, to recruit customers, and to recruit investors. So in this episode, taking everything that I've learned about building, scaling SaaS companies over the last 15 years, coaching over 250 SaaS companies inside of my coaching programs, I'm gonna walk you through the three core principles that you absolutely need to know about total addressable market. And when you follow these, you'll be able to accelerate the growth of your SaaS business. So if you're excited to dig into principle number one, go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really likes it when you do that. And let's go into principle number one. Okay, so the first thing you wanna understand is there's essentially three core pieces, and I'll walk you through each of the principles on how to think about total addressable market. The first piece is your actual total addressable market. And the other two pieces are less obvious, but when you look at all three of these things together, you'll understand exactly how to conceptualize and communicate. Because when investors or yourself or your team are talking about total addressable market, what I've realized is they're not talking about just total addressable market. And I promise by the end of this video, this will all make sense. The first thing you wanna understand is what is actually the market that you're going after. Nine times out of 10, you actually wanna say this is an existing market where money is already being spent. If you are trying to say this market doesn't exist, we're gonna go create it at this stage stage, you will never be able to recruit people because they won't understand what you're talking about. Great example of this, when Uber started, ride sharing didn't quite exist. They just said, we're gonna create a more efficient black car service. That's them saying, this is the total addressable market for black car services, we're gonna go after that. So almost always, if you wanna make things easy for yourself, start with an existing market, define the size of that market. If it's an existing market, it's easily Googleable and define how fast it's growing. Those are the three things you start with. What is my total addressable market? What's the market we're going after? What is it called? Usually it has a three letter acronym 
And the fact that it's an existing market is good for you. You wanna highlight that and you wanna say, this is the size of the market and this is how fast it's growing. That's the first piece of any total addressable market discussion. If you start with, we're gonna create this market that no one understands, no one knows, and we're gonna make up a three letter acronym, you will lose the faith of customers, of investors, of team members, because they just won't know what to relate with. Another great example of this is when the iPhone came out, it was barely a phone. In fact, it was a very shitty phone, but they called it the iPhone because they're like, this is a portable phone. By the way, it also happens to be an internet communicator and an iPod. Together, it's the iPhone. They went after that existing market of portable phones, even though they were really selling you something way different than a phone. So principle number one is you wanna define your total addressable market in terms of what people already know and understand and is sizable and say, look, this is an existing market. This is the size of that market. This is how fast it's growing and we wanna participate in there. That's principle number one. Once you have that, then we get into the second principle. And this was my aha moment when I really went through this because I'm like, if we just talk about this billion dollar market, investors don't quite blink. Team members don't quite get it. Customers don't get it. Like what's missing? And what was missing was the second piece because people don't wanna just understand the total addressable market. They're like, okay, cool. That's billion dollar market. It's going fast. Good for you. What are you gonna do? So the next piece is your ideal customer profile. So even in those major discussions, what investors wanted to know, what team members wanted to know, what my product people wanted, what we wanted to know was in this existing market, what is the piece that we are going to carve out? And so what you're really trying to communicate over here is what is your differentiation? You also wanna say, what is the size and segment of this market, this specific market? What is the size of this market? What is the segment that you're going after? how fast it's growing, and what's the competitive dynamics. This is the piece that a lot of founders miss, especially first time founders, because they're just like talking at this level, this principle number one level, which is important because it frames people, but they don't double click to say, in this massive growing market, which has other players, which I totally recognize, we are going to carve out a piece for ourselves. Here's how we're going to differentiate. Here's the size of that specific market. Here's how we're going to compete against existing competitors. And here's how our product is different, which is why customers will pick us. So in the case of the Uber example, for example, they'll say, look, there's this many black car rides being booked. You have to call them up. You have to request it. They have to have a credit card on file. Maybe they'll show up. It has to be ahead of time. Whereas for us, you open up your mobile phone and you hit the button. So they're saying our ideal customer is the affluent buyer that wants a black car right now. And we're gonna make the experience completely frictionless. So they're taking that total addressable market and then they're saying here's our ideal customer within that and here's how we're going to differentiate. This was my big aha moment. When I first started to understand, oh, it's not just about this slide with a big billion dollar number and massive growth. It's about the TAM and the ICP together. And when you can communicate this together, when you can think about this together, when you can conceptualize it, you can communicate it, you can calculate it, and you can actually bring this in front of people and communicate like, oh, this is exactly what we're going after. And here's our opportunity for entry. Here's how we differentiate. This is when a lot of things come together. So let me just pause here for a second before we get into the third piece, which really brings it together. Are you already starting to see the power in this? Are you starting to see the power of this TAM plus ICP and communicating that and conceptualizing is really how this whole piece comes together for yourself, for your team, and for investors. If you're starting to see the power of this, can I just get a yes in the comments below? And also, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really likes it when you do that. Now, if you're also in this stage where you're trying to figure out what's your TAM, what's your ideal customer profile, how do we grow, how do we raise more investment, or how do we get profitability, be sure to check my five-point SaaS growth strategy guide. It's completely free. I'll link to it below. I'll tell you more about it at the end of this episode. Let's go to principle number three right now because I'm really excited to show you how this all comes together. Also, if you haven't smashed that like button for the YouTube algorithm, please do it. it. Just loves it when you do that and so does my team. We put a lot of love into these videos. So once you have the TAM, then you have the ICP, then the third piece that really comes together so that you can conceptualize your TAM and you can communicate it and you can calculate it and you can mobilize people around it is your initial customer profile. This is your ideal customer profile. It's like, this is all the people within this total addressable market that we wanna go after. But this is your initial customer profile. And really your initial customer profile is the dollar amount in revenues that you're at right now 
and the dollar amount of revenues that you wanna to get to next and who those people specifically are going to be. And I'll explain the nuance of this and importance of this in a second, but just to be clear, let's just say you're at 100K of ARR right now and your next inflection point is to get to a million of ARR, right? And so your initial customer profile is gonna say, cool, out of this total addressable market, this is the slice of the market that is our ideal customers and how we differentiate and it's lucrative and there's a clear need and we can actually compete here. Out of that, this is the subset of those customers or sub-segment of those customers that's gonna take us from our current revenue level of 100K or whatever it may be to a million ARR or 3 million or 10 million or 100 million. This is super important because a lot of times founders struggle with, is this big enough of a problem to solve? And also how do we get revenues flowing? And they try to solve all those at once and what ends up happening is they end up trying to be everything to everyone so that they have a big enough market. But here's the thing that savvy investors understand. Going back to the beginning of this video when I was like, they asked me that question, like, could, do you think you could go after marketing automation? Or man, I had a 250 person sales team, could they use it? What they're really trying to understand is how big can this get? But what they're also trying to see from you is are you smart enough are you capable enough? Do you have enough of a vision to say how you will get to this big part of the market one step at a time? Because the magic in this, when this comes together, is you start with this initial customer profile. You have the discipline to say, we're at this, we wanna to get to this, and we're just gonna focus on this subset of customers because we're an early startup, maybe the SOC 2 reviews aren't perfect, or we wanna be actually sales driven, and then we'll move to product led when we have enough of a brand, any one of those things. So what they wanna see is like, okay, cool, does this person really understand how they're gonna get the initial revenues flowing? And then they're gonna grow into this bigger part of the market and start to have a bigger brand and raise more money and start to have a bigger posture and go after a bigger size of the market and then eventually expand into dominating other markets or the broader side of the market beyond the specific category that was their ideal customer profile. That is the final piece that investors wanna see, team members wanna see, where they wanna see like, well, what are the steps you're gonna get to get the initial traction, then the scale, and then what's your world domination piece? And that's what you're trying to communicate. And this was, baby TK didn't quite understand it. And a lot of first time founders, I see them saying, hey, we're going after a really big market and then move on to all the other stuff. But what they miss, what they really miss is being able to say, this is the total addressable market, out of that, these are our ideal customers that has the problem we're solving, we're gonna start there. But within that, to get to this next stage of growth, we're gonna focus on this initial customer profile. And once we conquer that, we'll move on to this. And once we conquer that, yes, of course, we'll go after marketing automation, or we'll go after any one of these size companies. We'll get into the world domination. We've thought about that when we go in these stages. And that is the biggest thing you wanna understand when discussing this topic about total addressable market. So to recap, if you're building a SaaS business and you're trying to figure out what is my total addressable market, number one, you actually wanna figure out what is my total addressable market and you wanna figure out what existing market you're going after and positioning for, what the size of it is, how fast it's growing. If it's not growing, if it's not big enough, then it may not be worth it. Once you have that, then you wanna define out of that market, what is the specific segment of the market that you wanna go after? That becomes your ideal customer profile. This is how you differentiate in that market, the specific size, and segment you're going after for that and who are the competitors are that you can actually create a product that really differentiates against them and competes against them in that subset of the market. Out of that, then you wanna define where am I in my current revenues? Where do I wanna to get to? And to get to just those revenues, who is the subset of my ideal customer profile that becomes my initial customer profile? And then you communicate, okay, I'm gonna first conquer my initial customer profile, and then I'm gonna conquer my ideal customer profile, and then I'm gonna expand in the world domination mode for going after the entire market. And when you do these three things, one, you will be able to conceptualize exactly how to think about your total addressable market. Two, you'll be able to communicate it and calculate it to your team members. And three, you'll be able to tell a compelling story to investors on how you start here, you build, 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 and you go after this really big world-changing vision where you take over the world, but you show the maturity in saying, I know that I can't take that over right away, so I start here, this is my wedge, then I expand here, and then I go here. And then they'll be like, cool, we'll write you a $15 million check 
which is basically what they did with me. So now you know how to think about the total addressable market, how to calculate it, how to conceptualize it, and how to communicate it so that you can accelerate your path to that next stage of growth. What you may not know is, well, how do all these pieces come together? How do I think about my ideal customer profile? How do I think about my initial customer profile? What is the market and how do I define it? This is why I created my five point SaaS growth strategy guide. It's completely free. Just go to getunstoppable.com slash strategy or follow the link below. And when you go there, you'll be able to actually figure out your strategy to grow and figure out some of these pieces with additional videos I have in my channel. It's completely free. You can go in and follow those steps and watch more videos like this. If you got value from this video, please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really likes it when you do that. If you have a fellow founder, a fellow team member that would get value from this video, if you're starting to think about, well, how big can this get and how do we communicate it? How do we raise money for it? Please share this video with them. It just will mean the world to us. We put a lot of love into these videos. Also, I drop an episode like this every single Sunday with actionable strategies and tactics from the trenches, from having done this so that you can actually start the growth of your SaaS business. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon that you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode. And lastly, remember, everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business. When you are with us, yours is going to be unstoppable. I'm TK and I'll see you the next episode or inside of that five point SaaS growth strategy guide completely free. Get on stopple.com slash strategy or follow the link below. Take care. Wow, I got really confused on that one.